One of the challenges that authors have is figuring out whether or not self-publishing is the right option or traditional publishing. And many of the fears around this is that if you choose to go self-publishing route, that you're gonna get stuck there and you're not gonna be able to get over to the traditional side. And that's one of the reasons why in today's video, we're gonna completely break this down and show you why that is not the case. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. So in today's video, we are gonna talk about 15 famous self-published authors you need to know. And the reason you need to know isn't just for some random thing, it's so that you can see that you can start with self-publishing and then move over to traditional publishing. And in fact, this is a very powerful route that has worked for many self-published authors who wish to go over to the traditional side, that's fine. Or you can also just stay self-published if you want but it definitely gives you a lot of options that are available to you. The first one is Margaret Atwood of successful self-published authors. And the thing with hers is that she's a Canadian author, a post, a poet and literary critic, and she's mostly known for her writing The Handmaid's Tale, Oryx and Crake, and The Mad at Am. Mad, <laughs> Mad Adam trilogy. Now, I've read the uh, the Handmaid's Tale and the and the sequel to that as well. So, uh, um, I would say definitely a fantastic author. Um, she received a ton of different awards for her contributions to literature, and we're looking at like the Booker Prize, and the Arthur C. Clarke Award, and the Franz Kafka Prize, Kafka Prize, and so. She's a well-known and respected and originally started as a self-published author. Number two, <clears throat> Robert Kiyosaki. He's one of my favorite authors in the area of entrepreneurship. And as a American author, entrepreneur, and investor, he's best known for which series? The Rich Dad, Poor Dad series that helps establish the whole concept of passive income really made a huge impact. And in fact, if you're a self-publisher published author, this directly plays into it. You're making money while you sleep by putting your books onto Amazon or these other platforms. They sell and then you're just making money, which is a fantastic one. And he doesn't just focus on just part of this, but he goes through the whole thing, looking at the different financial quadrants and all sorts of really cool stuff with cash flow and looking at ways that can be done both with whether you're dealing with digital assets, but also dealing with like real estate, which is where he got his start and where he learned a lot of this. He now has 26 books. And I can tell you, I've read most of them, probably about 20 of these, of the books that he's put out there, but he's one of the most influential financial advisors in the world. As of today, a really, really well-known powerhouse and a self-published author, which is really amazing. Because I think if I remember correctly, I've read the story that they wouldn't, they weren't willing to take a chance. This whole concept of rich dad, poor dad, which turned out to be a huge mistake on the traditional publisher side by not taking his book. Number three, Lisa Genova. I think it's Genova. And the thing is, she's an American author, a neuroscientist, and uh, she's known for novels exploring the impact of neurological disorders on individuals and their families. And these include books like Still Alice, which became adapted into an Academy Award winning film. She's a PhD in neuroscience from Harvard and uses her expertise to inform her writing and raise awareness about neurological conditions. Now I have not read any of her works, but another self-published author. Number four, Wayne Dyer. And Wayne Dyer was an American author. He's a multi, uh, multi motivational speaker and a self-help guru who has written a whole bunch of stuff, including your erroneous zones and the power of intention. Now I haven't also, after having written 40, he's written 40 books on personal development, but I have not actually read any of his books, but he's teaching all sorts of things with the importance of self-improvement, self-awareness and positive thinking and our fourth uh, self-published author. Number five, Irma. Rom S. Rombauer. And this is an American cookbook author, and I can tell you I have purchased uh, <clears throat> Irma's book. And that which book is that? Well, that is The Joy of Cooking. And she started writing this during the Great Depression era as a way to help families make nutritional and affordable meals during, of course, when it was a really tight time. And that's when the book originally came out. I was actually a little bit shocked when I was doing some research on Irma to see just exactly what it had done. So how many of these books has she sold, self-published? 18 million copies. Now, one of the things to remember is many of them, they get their signing deals with with major publishing houses once they have self-published. But that this is a way in where they're able to already build an audience and show the traditional publishers that people are willing to purchase their books. And so that really impacts it. Number six, Andy Weir. 
Randy Weir, he's an American science fiction author, and he's best known for one of my favorite science fiction books, which is The Martian. Both the book and the film, because it was turned, it was a, it originally was just a free serialized story on his website before it was picked up by a publisher and turned into a self-published, no, uh, into a best-selling novel. You have to keep in mind, though, it was just self-published. It was put out there for absolutely free, and it was turned into a successful film in 2015 with Matt Damon starring as Mark Watney. Fantastic film, great book, and another self-published author. And I've read a whole number of his additional books that he that came after this one. So uh, uh, definitely worth a read. And remember, as we're moving through this, the power of self-publishing. That, in fact, if you start with self-publishing, you can move on to the traditional publishing and even films and all sorts of stuff. Number seven, this is one of the older ones, Beatrix Potter. And she's a British author and illustrator best known for her children books, including The Tales of Peter Rabbit, which is what I grew up listening to, or re not really listening to, but I grew up having them read to me and reading them myself. And Potter's love of nature and animals, it inspired her stories as she was also a big on conservationism and she was a philanthropist. So a lot of things there in her books. How many of these books of this self-publisher sold? 150 million copies and been translated into 35 language, making her one of the most beloved and influential children's authors of all time. So uh, Beatrix Potter, which is a little bit shocking when you start to think about it, but yep, a self-published. The next one, another famous one from the old days would be Mark Twain. And he was an American writer, humorist, and lecturer, best known for his novels, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. And you have to keep in mind, his start was also self-published. It was not some traditional publisher back in the day. And so, uh, uh, and Twain's writing, he often addressed social issues and well-known for his satire, wit, and humor in the books he's done. He's got a huge legacy as a writer and cultural icon, including his influence on American literature and popular culture all the way to today. And a self-published author. So, and, and you're noticing a pattern here. These are really, really famous people, all started with self-publishing. Here's one you may not know, though. It was that number nine, Stephen King. That's right. Even though, of course, he's now done, done his books are put under traditional publishing houses, but his very first one was a self-published book. He's known for horror and suspense and supernatural fiction. I've read a lot of his books. And so, and I definitely can recommend them, and they've turned most, many of them into screenplays as well. And self-published author right and so uh, he's published how many novels 60 novels 200 short stories with many of them put into films and tv shows and even comic books and his writing style is characterized by he's got vivid characterizations and he deals with sh really sharp dialogues and he's got a talent for creating suspense and fear for uh, in his readers and so i think it was maybe the, the scariest book that he wrote at least according to my kids so uh, which is Kind of cool if you think about it, you know, the idea of getting started with self-publishing and then just putting book after book after book. And he did do some non, uh, did a non-fiction book called On Writing, which also is a definite worth a read. As an author, you should definitely see what he has to say on that. Number 10, E.L. James. And this is a British author who's best known for the romance novel Fifty Shades of Grey and the additional sequels. This was a self-published book. And the trilogy, it sold over 150 million copies worldwide and has intense romantic relationships exploring BDSM and sexual desire and power dynamics and all sorts of stuff. And is considered one of the most successful romance authors of our time. One other thing is that if you look at the number of reviews, you're looking at like three star average, three and a half star average on the review front, which is really amazing because you don't need that many stars on your reviews in order to get your books to sell. And E.L. James has proved the case that you can in fact sell a lot of books even as a self-published author. Number 11, Michael J. Sullivan. Now, he's an American author known for his epic fantasies, including the Rihanna Revolution, R R R R I haven't read it, this is the problem, Rhyria Revolutions, and the Rhyria Chronicle series. And they've been translated into a dozen languages, and his writing style it includes world building, complex characters, epic storytelling. He's considered one of the most successful independent authors in the fantasy genre and self published. Now, I probably should read some of uh, Michael's books, but uh, to this point, I have not yet gotten around to it. But the next one I have read, number 12, John Grisham. And I know it seems kind of crazy that John Grisham would actually be a self published author, but that's exactly right. You gotta keep in mind, you start by self publishing, and then after that, 
that, you end up getting picked up quickly by a major publishing house. Once you've proven there's an audience interested in what you're doing. And he's an author, he's a former attorney, which is of course why he does a lot of legal thrillers, including The Firm, The Pelican Brief, and A Time to Kill. And I've read some of his books and I've seen many, most of the films that have been done. But how much have his books sold? 300 million copies worldwide and translated into 42 languages as he's exploring themes like justice and corruption in the legal system. I can tell you, I've learned quite a bit from reading his books. I think Rain, Rainmaker was one of them that I, I remember reading or listening as an audiobook when traveling. Fantastic author and a self-published author. Number 13, John Locke is a, is a famous American author known for the Donovan Creed and Emmett Love series. Now, I have not read these and how I sold 1 million ebooks in five months. And the thing is, he's considered one of the pioneers of self-publishing coming out with his books is in, as an indie author in the early 2010s. Imagine as, as an author, if you could come out with books back then, but that was the thing. And they've sold over 2 million copies. He's known for this fast paced, very humorous writing style that makes it really popular. His ability to connect with his audiences really quickly using social media and these other digital platforms and that's what's really helped him as a self-published author and he's maybe one of these one of these people who are the, the pioneers of self-publishing is a key thing to think with him the next number 14 William P Young and William uh, is an author and best-selling novel of The Shack. Now, I have heard about that. I've not read it. It's like a religious book um, where God is, a, I can't remember, it was a woman, it's something like that. I, I, I don't remember the details of it. It was just a different way of looking at uh, religion in this way. The Shack, it was originally written as a Christmas gift for his children and friends. And there you go, a self-published, just written for his friends. And it was, the book was self-published and later became a best-selling seller, selling over 20 million copies worldwide. I have not read it myself, though. Do let me know in the comments if you have, though. Number 15, Christopher <clears throat> Paoluini. I, I sometimes lose these names. Anyway, Christopher is the author of the best-selling adult series, The Inheritance Cycle. Now, this one's a really fantastic one. He wrote his first book in the series, Aragon, when he was how old? 15 years old. I want you to imagine that. 15 years old. He self-published it with the help of his family and later signed a publishing deal with Knopf. And the thing to remember with Christopher here, it's that, I mean, my kids have all read his, uh, this inheritance, uh, cycle books, which are just really, really amazing. And he did it as a 15 year old. I mean, so not only young, but also getting out there as self-published. And then of course, once you've proven that what you have is something people want, then we can move on to traditional deals if you really wish to give up the royalties. But some people just don't want to mess around with anything else. And if you're selling lots of books, then you can get a really good juicy contract with the traditional publishers. So that's something you should definitely consider when you're going down the self-publishing route. My question for you is, did I forget any major self-published authors? Names that the average person would recognize. If I did, let me know below in the comments. And the thing I want you to really take away in conclusion from all of this, it's the fact that you don't have to be a traditional publisher to make it. You can start as a self-publisher, build an audience, start getting sales, and the traditional publishers will come in and begin to offer deals. The problem is many self-publishers just don't get that far, and that's why I work together with group coaching and coaching in order to get that straightened out to help you take you through the steps so you can get your book onto the market and learn how to get it selling. And for more tips like this, check up above me here for the next video. Thanks.